Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do here is generate a new React project, since that will just give us the space that we need to take a look at the forms. So let's say npx create React app, and we're gonna call this one something like React Forms, and we're going to use npm as the default package manager, and that's all we need to do. So let's hit enter, and that will generate that project for us. Okay, and once that's finished, we're gonna open that up in our IDE. So I'm just gonna say, cd react forms and say code dot and that will open it up inside visual studio code for me okay so before we get started here on our form deep dive let's just take a minute to review what forms look like in react right this will give us a good starting point and will help me to kind of explain some of the problems that i personally have with just the basic way of doing forms in react so uh, what I'm going to do is just open up our app.js component here. We're going to delete all of the boilerplate code that they gave us and the logo as well. Okay, I'm just going to make a few adjustments here and there we go. So the way that forms normally look in React, right, is we generally have several inputs, right? So we might have input, right, and this might be a name input. We might have an input, this might be, I don't know, an age input. We might have another input. Let's just say that's the bio input. And let's have another input. We'll say that this is the birthday input. This might be looking familiar to some of you who have worked on the friend tracker application. And then, right, after we've created those inputs, what we do is we generally create one state variable per input and create a two-way binding between them. And just as a reminder, here's what that looks like. We're gonna say import use state from React. And then if we wanted a name, age, bio, and birthday input, we are gonna say const name set name equals use state empty string, const age set age equals use state, right? That might be zero at first. Const bio set bio equals use state empty string. And last but not least, const birthday set birthday equals use state empty string. Okay, so that's repetitive. And if you thought that was repetitive, wait till we get down here to the inputs, right? Many of you know where this is going. Uh, we have to say value equals name. Then we have to say on change and event set name e.target.value, and I'm already tired of typing this stuff. And furthermore, right, if we wanna have labels on each of these inputs, it's the same thing, right? It's the same kind of repetition that we see up here, except it's even more boring because it's not even, it's not even any kind of logic, right? It's just a basic label with some text inside it. It's a little bit cumbersome to copy and paste, so you might just have name, right? And then with placeholder too, you end up repeating everything again. So you might say something like placeholder equals name, right? So if you end up doing this kind of thing for multiple labels, right? And especially if you're doing, I don't know, let's say that you're working on something like an onboarding flow for an application, you're gonna end up doing this exact same thing, right? Creating a state variable, creating a value, uh, adding this on change function here, adding a placeholder, adding a label, etc. You're going to get very, very tired of doing that, right? You're going to end up doing that probably about a hundred times, if not more. And that's something that's always bothered me about working with forms in React, right? And that's not even mentioning things like form validation, right? Once you get into form validation, if you want to make sure, let's say that name is two characters or longer, that's just the same kind of repetition all over again, right? What you have to do essentially, you, you end up writing functions like const validate name equals, and then you say if name.length is greater than, or is less than two, and then you usually have something like an error state up here that you set to show the user that the name isn't long enough, you get the drill, right? And we're gonna be taking a deeper look at form validation a little later on as well. But the point here is that in most forms that we're gonna end up writing, right, we're just gonna be repeating ourselves over and over again, and this gets really, really cumbersome. This can make up a majority of your development day if you're working on forms that are large enough. 
Um, and overall, it's just a waste of time because there is definitely an easier way to do all of this. So I think I've hammered home the problem here enough. Let me show you one possible solution that I propose, and this is what we're gonna be using as a starting point for our uh, React form deep dive here. So first of all, I'm going to remove all of these states. I'm going to remove all of this JSX, and I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. Well, don't close your eyes because you need to look at what I'm gonna type here, but just imagine this, right? Imagine that we have a reusable component, right? And we saw how to make our forms reusable uh, a while ago with one of the forms in our friend tracker application. But imagine that we go a step further, right? Imagine that we have this, this secret form component that allows us to write everything once, right? So let's say that we wanna add a name input. All we have to do is tell it that we want a name input and it will automatically take care of, you know, that state variable for us. It'll automatically take care of creating that two-way binding for us. It'll automatically take care of doing form validation for us, etc. Well, in that case, right, in this little fantasy world of ours that we're actually going to create shortly, um, here's what that might look like. We might have our form component, okay? And this form component it could take a prop called fields. Let me try typing that again, there we go. And basically what this fields prop would allow us to do is just tell the form what fields we want it to render, right? So something like name, age, bio, and birthday in the case that we just saw. And let's say that this form knew how to just take each of these strings you know, and turn it into a fully functional input, right? So we would have a name input, our age input, our bio input, and our birthday input here, all with the correct labels, all with the correct placeholders, all with the correct two-way bindings, etc. Now, as it happens, we already know most of the React logic required to do something like this, okay? And we'll be taking a look at exactly what that is shortly. Now the other piece of this form would be something like an on submit prop. And basically what this would do is it would allow us to access those values inside the form from our app component once that form is submitted. Okay, so you know, we might have uh, we might have a function here called display data. And the way that we would actually get four different values out of our form here via this on submit function would be by simply putting those into an object. So in our case here, that might look something like this, right? We might say name, and then that's got whatever value the user typed into the name input when they submitted the form. We might have age, right? That might have whatever age they typed in, bio, whatever bio they typed in, and birthday, whatever birthday they typed in. Okay, so that's how we would end up actually accessing uh, each of these properties and know what each of these properties is inside this on submit function. And I'm telling you all of this because I'm gonna show you how to implement this in just a minute here. So our display data essentially would look something like this. We would say name, age, bio, birthday. Right, we're just doing a little bit of object destructuring to get each of those properties as its own variable inside this function. And then what we would do, I mean, it depends on what we want to do inside this display data thing. I'm just going to show you how to display an alert. And, you know, it would just look like this. It would be, for now, we'll just say something like, you submitted, and then we'll say name. We'll just display the name to show that everything's working. We'll have our age here as well. Age. We'll have our bio, bio, and we'll have our birthday, birthday. Okay, and then of course we would pass this function to the on submit of our currently non-existent form component, and everything would be great, right? The problem right now, of course, is that this form component doesn't yet exist, and that is the next thing that we're gonna be taking a look at. So anyway, this is the ideal for a form in React. So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.